What's up everybody, this is Smarty P from SmartyPantsCoding.com and this is a video to run through uh, Adobe Brackets which is Adobe's uh, new HTML, CSS, and JavaScript editor. Uh, you probably haven't heard of Adobe Brackets because Adobe's not really promoting it yet. They just recently uh, talked about it on one of their blogs but outside of that they haven't uh, released any product pages for it or anything like that. Right now the only way you're going to find it is on GitHub. Adobe Brackets is an open source project that Adobe is initially seeding out there but is accepting uh, community uh, coders who want to contribute to the project. So all you gotta do to find it is just search for Adobe Brackets. These first two links you're gonna get are the ones uh, that are most useful. The first one is where you get it and then the second one's uh, kinda how to use it. So once you find the page on GitHub for Adobe Brackets you'll just go to Downloads and then download the latest Sprint. I've already downloaded it, so I'm just going to go. Uh, I've unzipped it here. The interesting thing about brackets is that it's actually made up of two different GitHub projects. Basically, what brackets is, is the entire editor is written itself in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, uh, potentially, it can run anywhere. Uh, because it itself is written in open standards, which is really impressive uh, once you start to get to play with it. Uh, there is a shell that wraps around brackets for Windows and for Mac uh, that will allow it to tie into uh, different things on your uh, operating system, like being able to open local files and things like that, uh, and being able to you know tap into uh, Chrome, uh, which is something that we'll show off here in a second. So, like I said, I've already downloaded this. When we look in here, you'll see we've got two main folders. One of them is a bin folder where you'll find the Mac and Windows clients. This is that wrapper I was talking about that wraps around the uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript core of brackets. So the other folder you'll see is the brackets folder, uh, and that's where you'll actually find all the HTML and CSS and JavaScript that is making up brackets. Uh, you also see some less files in here. Uh, they're using less, uh, which is kind of like SAS if you're familiar with that. Uh, it's a modern way to uh, do more with CSS, actually. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, but ironically, uh, while brackets will uh, color code less, uh, it won't uh, be able to do the live preview uh, if you're using less in your projects. So I'm going to run this brackets.exe uh, in the bin folder for the Windows client. Uh, and you'll see I've already uh, had this open, so it's just bringing me back to the workplace I was already in. Um, now that I'm in here, it may be a little more obvious what I was saying about having a, a wrapper shell and then having the core brackets itself. You'll see I've got two file menus here. Uh, this first one is the wrapper around brackets. So you see it doesn't really have a whole lot of options here. Uh, it tells us what uh, version we're on, what sprint we're on, that kind of thing. Uh, but all the real functionality is in this other file menu down here. So I've already opened a folder, and you can see it here. These are all the files in my folder. And this is an index file that I have open. I've already closed uh, the JSLint errors window, but this is a really cool uh, part of brackets. It shows you uh, errors in your HTML. Right now it's complaining about how this jQuery is delay loaded. So if I remove it and save it, you'll see the errors go away. Or I can just turn them back off. So one of the things that makes Brackets unique is that it taps into Chrome and acts like the developer tools within Chrome. So whenever you have the developer tools open in Chrome, you can browse the tree structure and edit your styles real time. But then when you refresh the page, obviously they all go away. Uh, but what Brackets does is it taps into that same channel so that it can also do live preview. and allow you to edit the CSS uh, real-time as well. What you're seeing here is actually a crash window. Well, it's, like I said earlier, Brackets is written uh, in HTML and CSS and JavaScript itself, and so whenever it crashes, it actually pulls up the Chrome developer tools uh, to try and help you debug the issue. Uh, normally, whenever I get this window, I'm able to just go to the debug window and reload Brackets, and then usually that'll fix the problem. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, open this index.html and then hit the live file preview. And you'll see it open in Chrome. And right now, brackets is basically tied into Chrome the same way Chrome developer tools are. So it's basically attached to the DOM. You'll see over on the left in my style.css, uh, I can come over here and as I edit, you'll see it real time uh, updates on the right. So it's just like the Chrome developer tools are the main thing difference being that this, this is inside you know an actual editor that you can then save from and uh, persist your changes as you go where this is really interesting and where I think it's been cool is that once you lay out all your HTML and you're just getting started on writing your CSS it's pretty cool to to go over to the CSS editor and as you're uh, adding in your new class Be able to see it get styled real time. So that's pretty cool. And then I saved because I like what I saw. Otherwise, I could have just reverted and and never saved it. Uh, so it's kind of like having the the Google Developer Tools, but a little bit uh, better. You still will need the developer tools. Uh, whenever you're debugging a complex page, having the ability to, you know, drill down and find that exact element you're looking for is something you have to have, uh, and it's not something that's part of brackets. So uh, you'll still want to have a, a, you know, a second screen if you can to be able to have brackets, Chrome, and the developer tools open if you're getting, you know, serious. Uh, so the other thing that I want to show is uh, the it's called the inline edit in Chrome or sorry in brackets and basically what it lets you do is any element that you have open you can hit Control E and it'll take you straight to editing it in line. Uh, this is something that kind of compensates for uh, the Google Developer Tools and that it does let you take go right to the element uh, and immediately edit its class, but you still have to find it in the HTML. Uh, manually. But anyways, you can see once I select one of these and I hit control E and it pulls up the editor in line, and you see I have multiples here, I can actually edit this. I'm not even sure what I'm editing, so I should probably edit one and what it'll do. How about this one? Oh, and you'll see we've lost our connection here uh, with the live file preview. Not sure what exactly would have caused that. Um, I did open the wrong style.css at some point. Uh, so I'm going to reconnect it by hitting that again. That can happen sometimes if you close the tab and then reopen it or I don't know uh, exactly but sometimes you'll see it disconnect. Right now it's not wanting to connect so I'm just going to close it and then try it again. And I'm not sure why it's not playing nice right now. You can see how it's uh, halfway connected. There we go. Now it's live connected. So now when I come and edit my text, my font size, I can see it real time. And since this is in the CSS, it updates um, in line, even though I'm editing it in the HTML. It's obviously still editing it in the CSS file. So, you know, like I said earlier, you can't edit the HTML without having to save and reload. But, uh, you know, all in all, this is a pretty nice editor. Uh, pretty exciting to be able to have something like this and not have to pay uh, anything for it. Uh, the biggest thing that it's missing is it doesn't have any of the uh, predictive text or kind of type ahead lookups. Like if you don't know, uh, you know, what you need to be able to put in for font family, it'll have you know predictive lookups. That's not in there yet. Uh, but like I said, they they say themselves on the uh, Adobe Brackets website that this isn't intended uh, for uh, large scale use right now. You know, they're telling you it, it's not ready for general use yet uh, but if you're you know if you're willing to maybe every once in a while have to you know tell brackets to relaunch or to spend a couple minutes and figure out an issue if one pops up then it's definitely worth playing with uh, I've submitted two bugs on github and both of them have been resolved uh, I was actually going to talk about you know the bugs and what they were and how we got them fixed but then I was like why bother they've already fixed them which is pretty cool uh, the turnaround was not even two days I don't think uh, for each of them whenever I had uh, logged them on uh, github so that's Adobe Brackets uh, definitely check it out uh, I'm not sure when Adobe is going to uh, start promoting it more heavily uh, my bet would be uh, 
once they get in that predictive text, I think they'll really uh, start promoting it. Uh, but definitely worth checking out if you're looking for a good uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript editor. All right, thanks for watching.